Today we're going down to get our car registered. As soon as I put this under here, I'm going to forget and run over it. Sure enough. Alright, so we got the car in the trailer. This thing does fit on the trailer. And again, I'm only kind of driving residential down. Um, one of the issues is this lip up front comes up pretty close. And this is not fully tied in, so I got a little bumper there. But, you know, if you actually hit a bump so big that the suspension's moving, uh, you could have some issues there. And we're actually staying off the highway because of when you go over bridges, sometimes there's a two inch gap and then you hit it really hard. So we're, we're purposely not gonna go on the highway because of that. The other thing you have to watch about is this ridge here, not necessarily because of where the car is, but as you're coming up the ramp, as you're coming up the ramp right there, it will, uh, you know, barely miss the car and then of course there's no way actually to get on this trailer unless you have the trailer on the ground and your ramps actually on the uh, driveway itself so today was an interesting day i finally got a chance to take the car down and get it inspected and in the state of arizona you have to go to a level two inspection there's only certain places that you could go to to do that and um you know, they're basically kind of looking to make sure that the frame, the body, the engine, everything kind of matches up what it's supposed to be. And Factory 5 gives you a certificate of origin, and they also give you a serial number and a badge plate with a serial number. Now, in the state of Arizona, that badge plate doesn't really mean anything. It's, you know, just issued by the car dealership. It might mean something in other states. I'm not sure. But the but the certificate of origin actually means something. And uh, so the way I approached this was, you know, I, I have limited time and I have to rent a trailer to take this down there. And I wanted to verify and, you know, call up the inspection officer and, and, and figure out, you know, exactly what do I need to do? You know, do I need to take the car off the trailer once I'm there? Um, you know, does the windshield actually need to be on the car or can I just bring it with me to show, show you that I have it? Uh, same thing with the mirrors, things like that. And uh, what I found out was that yes, you do have to have the windshield on the car. Uh, I guess in this state, there is a, uh, a wiper law, like you need to have wipers on your cars. But if you bring a squeegee and you tape it on and you use it by hand, technically that's a wiper. And so there's ways around stuff like that. Um, so I had a good conversation with this guy a few weeks ago and, uh, you know, kind of just, you know, he could tell, like, I'm just trying to figure out the boundaries of what I need to do just because I am renting stuff. It's not like I have my own trailer and I want to lose a day of work while I'm going down there. And, uh, so then a few weeks later, I had a few more questions and, uh, I said, all right, well, as soon as, as soon as the, uh, you know, it stops raining cause it's been raining every day in Arizona, I'm like, as soon as there's a clearing, I'm going to schedule and go down there. He's like, great. So uh, sure enough, 
you know, the clearing came, I scheduled something, I sent him an email, I said, hey, I'll be down on Wednesday, you know, um, I'll see you there. And so um, I went and got a U-Haul trailer. Now the problem with this car, it's kind of like a Corvette. It's, you know, less than four inches off the ground. And so am I gonna, you know, make, make it onto the trailer from the ramps? Well, I knew that I could at least use the driveway against, uh, you know, against the ground of the, of the road and get that extra three, four inches to help get those ramps up. And so we did that and that worked out fine. Um, so I kept the windshield off the car and when we pulled up, I pulled the windshield out, grabbed some tape, taped it onto the car. And I didn't do anything with the mirrors and such because uh, I figured I was good. And I figured I was just going to pull into this area and they were going to inspect the car, verify the serial numbers of the engine and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, here we go. So when you pull up, you actually go inside and you go to a certain area and you have to actually pay your $25 fee, which is the inspection fee. And so as I go walking up and I remember that, you know, when I was emailing and talking to the uh, inspection officer, I didn't realize that it was actually an officer. Like I show up and there's a full cop with a bulletproof vest, police officer across the front or whatever, like the full thing. And I was like, oh, this is serious. This is like really serious. And so I pay my fee and he has me fill out a sheet. And so basically he goes, I want you to write this on there. And I'm like, okay. He goes, I purchased this vehicle from Factory 5 Racing and I built it myself because they want to know what you did to it. Was it a salvage vehicle? Did you restore it? You know, all these different things. And so that was my official statement, paid the fee and then waited for another officer to come. So another officer comes up and meanwhile, I haven't met the guy that I've actually talked to on the phone and he's like, all right, uh, come with me. So I go with that guy and we go out there and He's like, all right, we, uh, you need to bring the car around here. And I'm like, great, I'll, I'll go grab it. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, it's on a trailer. So I'll just back it up in there. And he's like, oh no, you need to get it on the ground. And I'm like, well, that's not what the other guy said. And he's like, well, I guess you're gonna forfeit your time and you'll just have to come back another day. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I could get the car off of the trailer because of the angle. And the way that their driveway is, it kind of comes off from the asphalt. And I don't know if it was enough of an angle for me to get it off, but I'm like, no, let me try getting the car off. I got to bring the trailer around, you know, he's like, okay. So meanwhile, I go get the trailer and uh, I'm bringing, bringing it around. And finally, another officer comes out and it turns out it's the guy that I talked to on the phone. And so we're kind of unstrapping the car. We're going through the motions that we're getting ready to pull it off the trailer. The other guy comes out and he's like, hey man, how's it going? He's like super nice. And I could hear him in the background before he came up and he's like, well, you know, I've talked to the guy on the phone and you know, he's just trying to blah, blah, blah. And you know, he's, he's just working on the car and you could tell the other officers like not having it, you know, like he's not having it with me. And then he's like, you know, he's just trying to do the right thing. And you know, and so, uh, you know, they both come out and he's talking to me and he's asking me questions about, you know, whether they could put the VIN number inside the car, but there's really no frame. It's all fiberglass right there. So, you know, we suggested to put it on the outside of the car and, um, you know, <laughs> and, and originally before I brought the car back with the trailer, I was like, tape on the mirrors, tape on the mirrors. This is getting serious, you know, so we're you know, getting all really intense about it. Uh, and then I, you know, if it wasn't for that guy, man, I literally don't think I would have passed. I don't think I would have gotten out of there. I would have had to pull my car out of the trailer, but the other guy smooth talked it all out, never had to take the car off the trailer, uh, cinched it all back up, got the VIN number, stuck it on the frame and, uh, and, and it was piece of cake. So the other guy comes back over and he hands me the paperwork and he's like, all right, you're good to go. And I'm like, okay. I was like, so can I actually go inside and get my license and tags? And he's like, absolutely. Rock on. Okay. Cause I didn't know if I'd have to go through another inspection or, you know, you don't have seatbelts in your car, so you're not allowed to do that yet or, you know, whatever. I don't know. So, uh, so yeah. And, and just, you know, I brought seatbelts. I brought every, like anything that I thought was like, you know, the actual horn button, if that's a safety issue, I had it in the car with me. Seatbelts, I had them in the car with me, but not installed. 
the mirrors. I had them in the car with me. And so, uh, so then I couldn't believe it. So I pulled the car, parked it, went inside. And um, in the state of Arizona, you could actually license this car, even though it's a brand new car, I could license it as a 1933 vehicle, which means no emission testing. Uh, it's exempt from everything. So I don't, you know, it's free and clear basically. And it's already depreciated in a sense, right? Cause it's 1933. So my tags uh, were like 40 bucks and, uh, and that was good for a year. Uh, where normally it's almost about 10% that they give you for your plate charge. So if you buy a $30,000 vehicle, you're paying like $300 for your tags every year. So imagine if you had a supercar or something, you'd be paying literally like $1,500 for a tag every year, which totally sucks. So it was totally exempt. And so while I was there, I was like, well, um, you guys have, you know, everything's online now. I was like, you guys have my title for my van online. And they're like, yeah. I was like, well, can I go ahead and get plates and tags for that? And they're like, absolutely. So they pulled it up. And so I got both my plates, both my tags uh, for both cars and walked out and everything was great and uh, got it back to the house. I knew that my car was going to be able to, you know, clear back off onto the driveway and so it was no problem. So, uh, yeah, I really didn't think I was going to come home with plates and tags and here I have it for both vehicles. So it was a great day and uh, really a great momentum to move forward because now I could actually go on the real road, I could test it. I'm not even able to get my speedometer to work because you have to actually drive it. Exact, you gotta find what two miles exactly is by taking another vehicle and marking off you know, some spots on the road. And then you have to drive your car for two miles straight at 45 miles per hour to dial in the speedometer. And if you have to stop at a stoplight in between that, that's fine. But they want you to do two miles at 45 miles per hour. And that actually, um, you know, adjusts your speedometer and tweaks it into your transmission and all that stuff. And so these are things I can't do. You know, I haven't shifted the car into fourth gear yet because I don't think I've even been in third gear because I haven't been able to go fast enough in my neighborhood to get it up to par to see it shift. So now that I can do that legally and not worry about a $300 ticket or anything, you know, because tickets are so expensive these days. Not that I know that. Um, I was actually told that. Um, you know, I could go out there and do it legally now and not have to worry about it. So uh, great day. I'm really happy and uh, looking forward to some more testing. Have a great day.